the League of Women Voters of Orange, Durham, Chatham, and the North Carolina Center for Voter Education present the 2011 Chapel Hill Mayoral and Town Council Candidate Forum. Good evening and welcome to the 2011 Chapel Hill Candidates Forum, sponsored by the League of Women Voters and the Center for Voter Education. I'm Roz McGee, a member of the League, and I'll be moderating the forum. The League of Women Voters is dedicated to informed participation of citizens in government. The Center for Voter Education is dedicated to helping citizens make the most of your vote at the ballot box and beyond. Neither the League nor the Center endorses candidates. More information on voting is available at both websites. This forum is being filmed for rebroadcast and will be shown on Thursdays at 7, Saturdays at 9 a.m., and on Sundays at 9 a.m., and that is Thursdays at 7 p.m. Now for the format. We're going to begin with the candidates uh, for mayor. 20 minutes will be dedicated to this section, perhaps a, a little less time. Each candidate will have up to three minutes for opening statements followed by questions from the moderator. Candidates will have one minute to answer these questions. And the second section will be the council candidates. Each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. Then there'll be a question and answer session. With the first candidate to answer the question given one minute to respond and others 30 seconds. If they wish to take that time. The forum will conclude with one minute closing statements from each council candidate. And we have a league timer in the front row with a red card. She will be raising that for the candidates when your time is up, if you will conclude the sentence that you're speaking at that time. The Chapel Hill Council consists of eight members who serve staggered four-year terms. Four council members will be elected on November the 8th. We are pleased that all council members have accepted the invitation to participate tonight. And we had anticipated having all the mayoral candidates. I see we have an empty chair. This race, the races are nonpartisan. So I would like to turn to the mayoral candidates and offer the opportunity for three minutes for opening statements. Gentlemen, of uh, the one of you that goes first here, will uh, then be the first when we do the closing statements. I think that's the fair way to do that. Who would like to go first? I'm gonna call on you, Tim. Okay, I, I don't know I'm gonna fill, fill three minutes though. I don't know, it's great to be here. I'd like to thank the, the league for inviting me. It's, uh, it's too bad Kevin couldn't make it because I still haven't met him yet. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm Tim, I'm running for mayor. I'm the only Tim on the ballot, so don't worry about the rest of the name. Uh, I'm basically interested in uh, making Chapel Hill make more sense, make it uh, more walkable, more um, bike trails, more bike lanes, more crosswalks, uh, sensible transportation, later bus service. I mean, just basically making the place a little bit more awesome. Uh, a little bit about myself. I moved here from Texas last uh, June. And uh, I'm liking it so far. It's pretty good. But, uh, you know, I always whine about little, uh, little niggling things. And it, it just, my, my, uh, my wife's tired of listening to it. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mark Kleinsmith, your opening statement, please. Thank you. Um, I'm Mark Kleinsmith. I'm the mayor of Chapel Hill. Uh, prior to becoming mayor, I've served for eight years on the Chapel Hill Town Council. This has just been an extraordinary gift that the people of Chapel Hill have, have provided me, which is an opportunity to serve as the town's mayor. Um, it's hard to imagine, really, a greater job. Um, a little bit more about me. I, of course, have lived here in Chapel Hill for most of the last, now, 23 years. Um, I'm a, I graduated from the university, uh, both as an undergrad. Um, I did leave for a few years. I was a teacher in Charlotte before returning in 1997. Um, to get my law degree, graduating in 2000, um, and then the, taking a year off and then getting into politics. 
Um, I currently am the executive director of the Fair Trial Initiative, which is a nonprofit organization that's headquartered in Durham. We um, train death penalty lawyers right out of law school. I'm, that's my day job. I, um, when I travel around the country and I remind everyone what a great community this is, I do, one, of the, one of the things I tell them is that it's probably the only community in the country that would elect an openly gay death penalty lawyer as their mayor. Um, and I think that's something that's really kind of unique about us and kind of quirky about the kind of uh, community we are. We don't allow you know, those kinds of things that might ordinarily cause the end of somebody's political career um, uh, to do that. And rather, uh, as we, instead, we see it as evidence of someone who is willing to stand up and fight for what's right and what, the person, what, what that person believes in. Uh, my entire life has been dedicated to uh, public service, whether it be a teacher or a nonprofit lawyer, a council member, or the mayor. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, and I hope that the people of Chapel Hill will allow me another term. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the questions that have been prepared by the League of Women Voters covering a wide range of topics. Many of them do fall in the planning area, so we will start with some questions in that area. I will uh, direct a question to one of you uh, with one minute to respond, and the other one will have 30 seconds. And we'll alternate in that process. First question, there's a natural tension between preservation and environmental protection versus economic development. How can the town balance environmental and historic preservation with economic development and social equity? I'll start with you, Mr. Kleindice. Mr. Kleinschmidt. Kleinschmidt, thank sure. you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, this is a common question. I think it's become the theme of this year's campaign, whether it be at this forum or others. And uh, I've been pleased to hear candidates talk about how it's really not the dichotomy that it might appear to be. The, um, if we set up uh, questions as either or, particularly when it's environmental protection and economic development, really whatever, we come, whatever comes out of the other end, we're going to, the whole community is going to be a loser. And actually, our interest in environmental protection and economic development are going to, uh, uh, are going to suffer. Um, every development project we have um, requires the town and the community at large to balance our interests in growth and protecting our, our environment. I think the town has done a, it has done a fine job. Uh, we've led the country in, create, in developing regulations to, uh, to protect the natural environment. And now it's time for us, I think, to show the country how we can encourage economic development within that same context. And Mr. Sukram. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, it's not really that, that uh, difficult, but the way we're going about it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We should have urban development that uh, builds up and instead of being so uh, crooked and winding roads, we should really focus on having a more grid-like structure. And I mean, there's so much land that we have that's, you know, pretty much free to be used. I mean, we take up a lot of space without really using it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. The next question I'm going to direct to you, Mr. Sukram, you'll have one minute. All right, right. And Mr. Kleinsmith, you'll have the 30 seconds. Do you have ideas about how the town can streamline the development process? And should it be streamlined? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, pretty clear that it should be streamlined. I mean, we've, we go through a, like an 18 month process and people still be, end up unhappy about development projects. I mean, the public backlash against condos is just, I mean, it's like you had plenty of time to make noise about this. Um, I mean, as far as the specific elements, I have no idea. And I'm sorry for the little willful ignorance, but uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think there, there's room for a lot of efficiencies. And one of the things I'm proud of the last two years is that we've created many. Um, now, I'm not, I think we're right now in this point where we are testing whether some of them work. Many of them have worked uh, and have done well. One thing we've done that hasn't really worked as well as we had hoped was the combining all of our boards and commissions for a single presentation. But I still look 
forward to in, uh, having something like that in place so that we can provide for adequate citizen and, and advisory board input, but still um, allow for a predictable, well-paced process for our, devel uh, for our development projects. Thank you. And moving again in the planning area, but on to housing. And Mr. Klein-Smith, I'll start with you. Is Chapel Hill doing enough and doing the right things to encourage affordable housing? Um, I don't think we should ever, I, well, we're not in a place today, today at least, and I think it's gonna be a long time before we're gonna be in a place where we say we're doing everything we could, we can do, um, and everything we should do. But we are doing a great deal. This, this past year, we completed the creation of our, um, our affordable housing strategy, which is available on the website. It's a really, it's a really easy to read one page synopsis of, a, of an approach to how our affordable housing needs from, that go from and meeting the needs of uh, folks who are looking for, for uh, market rate homes that meet the needs of people who make around 100%, 120% of the median income, all the way down to homelessness. And I think that, that process, was, uh, was an extraordinary achievement, and it's given us a path towards making progress along the full spectrum of affordable housing needs. And of course, we could go on and on about, how, about the town's commitment to its nonprofits that provide housing, and I think that should continue. We've we begin looking at creative ways of using payment in lieu, which I am also very supportive of. Thank you, and 30 seconds to you, Mr. Sukram. Well, I think it's really easy for the, the town to say that they're doing a lot. I mean, they have this uh, program that's something like 15% of new developments need to be affordable. I mean, why aren't the, uh, the apartments and houses in these new developments, you know, 50% affordable? Why not 90%? Why not 100%? You know, why are we uh, seeding out contracts to places that make, make uh, apartments and houses that nobody can afford? I mean, the, the uh, 100K... Uh, oh. Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, I'm going to uh, ask you. Ron, so I see our other count, uh, mayoral candidates arrived. If it, uh, okay, thank you. Mr. Wolf is joining us, and we're going to uh, continue with our questions. And uh, this question is a yes and no question. I'm going to ask that. Uh, you raise, you, uh, I'll ask for yes and I'll ask for no. We'll see what your answers are. If you wish to amplify it, you'll have an opportunity to do it in answering a later question, but it follows on the planning questions. Do you want a big box store in Chapel Hill? If you say yes, please raise your hand. And if you say no, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you very much, and if you wish to amplify that, uh, we oh, yes. will come to that later. Oh. Let me ask you another yes and no question. Uh, this is a, I'd call it a transportation and a safety question. Do you support a ban on talking on cell phones while driving in Chapel Hill? If you say yes, if you support a ban, please raise your hand. If you say no, you do not support a ban, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move to a tax question. And uh, Mr. Wolf, you have joined us, and our, the way we're patterning this is we are taking turns directing a question to candidates. The first one has a one minute, and the second and third respondents each have 30 seconds. This question, do you think town taxes are too high? And if so, do you have suggestions as to where to cut them? Uh, why would I expect this question? Um, town tax is too high. You know, I don't know that any tax is too high, but it's the putting together all the taxes that we experience in the United States that results in high taxes. If you take them individually, maybe you can argue, well, these taxes are needed and they're not too high. But every time we look around, and I challenge each and every one of you, all the citizens of Chapel Hill, when was the last time you heard of a tax being removed or cut? Rarely. Now, I don't know if that means we need them all, but I'd like to challenge the citizens of Chapel Hill 
to rethink what we do. I think there's an opportunity to be more efficient as a government. I think we owe it to all the citizens when they're faced with the total amount of taxes that they have to pay to be considerate and try and reduce the amount of taxes that we actually have them pay for Chapel Hill. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe it is now your turn, uh, Mr. Sukram. We'll take you for a 30 second. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, oh, gosh, what was the question? Are taxes too high? Oh, uh, no, no, they're all right. I mean, um, taxes were lower where I went, but there was a lot less government where, uh, where I lived in Texas. Yeah. I think they're okay, but I, th I don't think we need to raise taxes every time uh, you know somebody loses their job or the economy goes bad, just so the government can have uh, more money than it knows what to do. Uh, I mean, we should we should be all right budgeting and finding efficiencies. And uh, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Klein Smith. I think it's important to realize that the taxes that the town that the town levies, which is not the full property tax bill are a result of, re of requests and the needs of our community. Um, there isn't a program that was asked for, that, 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 that's funded, that wasn't asked for, that, um, was, that wasn't seen as a, a need for our community and to defining the, co the quality of life that we have. That said, the town council has not raised taxes in, in, a, in now the three years, and I think only maybe, maybe three times since I, in the decade I've been on council. Um, it's not as common a uh, phenomenon as uh, some might, might, might think it is. Thank you. I'm going to present another yes and no question. Public financing for town elections has been in place for two election cycles in Chapel Hill. Would you want to see it renewed for 2013? If you want to see it renewed, please raise your hand yes. Thank you. And if you want to see at sunset, please raise your hand for a no vote. Thank you very much. The next question is a public safety question. Does downtown Chapel Hill have a crime problem? And if so, what should be done about it? I'd like to have you start with that, Mr. Kleinsmith, for one minute. Sure, I don't think that downtown Chapel Hill has any particular crime problem that isn't part of the overall crime experience that we have in our community. Um, I think, though, that it is an area in which we need to be very careful at making sure it doesn't become an area with a specific crime problem. And we, we need to make sure that folks don't perceive it to be a place where crime occurs at any rate higher than anywhere else. And I think we make, we make great strides toward achieving that whenever we make, you know, we can make sure that, that uh, the areas are well lit, that it's easy to get from place to place, and, uh, whether in your car or on, your, uh, or on feet, um, but also that we continue our efforts at putting more eyes on the street. And I'm by that, I mean, giving people a reason to be there and giving people a, a, a way to live there. Um, there's less crime in front of people's homes than there is in front of empty businesses or, or businesses that are closed. Um, and if, if, the, if hours of commercial operation are longer, fewer, less, less incidents occur, and when people are living there, um, it becomes a safer space. Thank you. And Mr. Sukram, I'll call on you for a 30 second. Well, I don't think it's a problem. I don't think, you know, downtown is, is any kind of uh, spectacularly different than any other part of Chapel Hill. I mean, it, it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's one of the, the safest downtowns that I've ever been to. Thank you. Mr. Wolf, 30 seconds. Well, I, you know, faced with this question, I can't help but remember a few years ago, when a young lady from the college was killed in our downtown. And I can't help but think that that is a representation of where we're at and where we've been. I think we can do better, and I hope that we do better with crime. Now, the question of perception. Uh, this is my eighth year here in town. Uh, I guess I'll have to stop and quit explaining that. So, Thank you. We're now going to go to our closing statements, and there will be one minute for each candidate. And we're going to 
take those in reverse order, but I'm going to have to ask you gentlemen to help me remember who is going to be the initial, and uh, Mr. Wolf, we'll give you the, the last uh, I think statement. I, I think that would put me first this time. Thank you very much. Please, please proceed with a one minute closing statement. Thank you, Roz, and thank you to the League for um, allowing this uh, opportunity for us to have a conversation. I wish we could have talked a little bit longer. I know I'm looking forward to the Council colleagues' conversation, and it's really, I think, the race that folks are watching, um, as am I. Um, I'm, looking, I'm hoping, again, that the f people of Chapel Hill will see fit to return me to um, that chair over there for another two years. Uh, this has been, uh, it's going to be an amazing time for Chapel Hill over the next over this next term. The setting of our new comprehensive plan is an opportunity to have our whole community participate in, in defining its vision for itself for a decade or more. And it's one of the most exciting times to be uh, working um, in government. And I, I'm looking forward to being part of that process as we move forward. Thank you. Mr. Sukram, one minute. Oh, man, I wish I hadn't gone second. Uh, well, um, basically, vote for me. I'm Tim. I'm uh, interested in, uh, you know, just basically improving the city where it needs improvement, improving the government, uh, better budgeting, more efficient, um, more business-friendly Chapel Hill. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And Mr. Wolf. I'd like to ask the citizens of Chapel Hill for their vote this year. I want to remind them of two years ago when Mark Kleinschmidt one with less than 50% of the vote. This is our opportunity. This is our chance to win the mayor's position. As you may recall, I bowed out of the race to give Matt a chance to win. I ask for the supporters of Matt and my supporters to do it again. Please bring on your votes and let's make it count this time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you to our candidates. We appreciate that very much. We'll take a short break while our candidates for council come to the uh, microphones. Thanks for letting us go first. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Kevin, welcome to Chapel Hill. Thanks. Okay, we're now going to move to the forum where we will be hearing from candidates for town council. We have nine candidates who are all present tonight. We're waiting. One is going to join us shortly. And I'd like to remind you about the format. Candidates will have one minute for opening statements. And if you would think about focusing that on what do you think of the, is the most significant challenge facing Chapel Hill in the next four years. We will then move to the uh, questions. Some of the questions we may be repeating from the earlier ones that were asked of the mayoral candidates. I'm going to alternate calling on candidates to be the first responder. The first responder will get one minute. Others will get 30 seconds. You may pass if you wish on that 30 seconds. If you wish to say I uh, agree with an earlier statement or to make abbreviated remarks, that of course will let us uh, cover more topics. And then the closing statements are going to be in reverse order of the opening statements. Candidates will have one minute at that time. So ladies and gentlemen, are we ready? Mr. Ward, could I ask you to lead off with the one minute opening statements? Yes, thank you very much to the League of uh, Women Voters and for those who are here tonight and who might be uh, watching on TV tonight or subsequent airings of this program. Um, I have 12 years of experience on the town council. I think that experience will serve um, the citizens well. I'm somebody who is, uh, remains passionate about this community. I bring a balanced perspective. Uh, I, I think that uh, sustainability, the uh, economic development, social equity, uh, environmental protection uh, all need to be advance as we move forward uh, through the difficult questions that we're facing. Uh, in particular, the uh, fiscal challenges that we are going to be facing are, um, I think, most daunting after having served or lived through three years now of uh, reduced revenue. We've got a fourth one to, to go through, and, and I'm not sure what the uh, revenue picture is beyond that, but it 
nonetheless will be a challenge for us to meet the needs of our uh, citizens. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Storo, one minute. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lee Storo, and I'm a candidate for town council in Chapel Hill. I'm running for town council because I want to be a coalition builder in our community. As I reflect on the state and local advocacy work that I've done, I've really focused on bringing diverse stakeholders together to solve our common problems. And that's something we as a town and a community need to do in Chapel Hill. In my experience in a professional setting, I serve as managing director of the North Carolina Alliance for Health. We focus on diversity work and um, tobacco and obesity prevention in North Carolina. And I'm proud to serve on nonprofit boards in our state. I want to briefly focus in the minute I have about our growth needs, specifically around transportation. I've talked to many residents in this community over the course of the campaign, and there's concerns that as our community continues to grow, particularly in the Triangle as a whole, we won't be able to manage the infrastructure and the transportation needs that we have. And we need to think strategically about investing in public transportation and ensuring we can move our residents throughout Chapel Hill and throughout the Triangle as we grow. Thank you. Next candidate, please, Mr. Schuler. Good evening. I'm Carl Schuler, and I'd like to thank you, Roz, and the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum for this evening. I've been in the area for 20 years, and of those years, 11 years have been in Chapel Hill. I've returned to Chapel Hill in 2004 as a homeowner, and I'm looking at uh, issues facing the town uh, in the next four years, specifically looking at uh, the comprehensive plan and the outcome of that report to council for next year, looking at growth and development, the services for the town, and for the town to meet the needs of its constituents. I'm also interested in our relation with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, by far our largest employer here in town, and looking at other aspects too, which include uh, the means for housing, for inclusionary housing, affordable housing, and looking to generate and foster a better community. Thank you. Mr. DeHart. Thank you, League of Women Voters. Thank you for having us here tonight. It's a great forum and glad to see all the folks in TV land. My name is John DeHart and I'm running for Chapel Hill Town Council. Who am I? I am a, I'm a father, I'm a lender, and I'm a husband to my wife. And that, that's the main reason we chose Chapel Hill. My wife has two degrees from UNC and we, we love it here. We have three kids that are being educated in the best most diverse public school system in the country, and we're, we're proud to be here. There's several issues that our town needs to focus on that you've told me about as I've been knocking on doors over the past several weeks. The one that I think is the most pressing is our balance of balancing sustainability and making it versus be economic versus, versus environmental. We have the highest environmental standards of anyone in the country, and we need to make sure we keep it that way. But at the same time, though, we have to make sure that we have a, the sustainable also means a business plan as well. We have to make sure that we take care of our budgetary needs, which we're going to have a lot of work to do in the next year. Thank you. John DeHart for the Heart of Chapel Hill. Thank you. Mr. Dale. Hi. My name is Lenny Dale, and I am running for Chapel Hill Town Council. <clears throat> I moved here four years ago, or my family and I moved here four years ago after searching literally the globe for a place to live. And we, we chose Chapel Hill because we thought it was the best place we could find to raise a family, to live, and to work. Uh, in those four years, it's proven to be 100% true. What makes Chapel Hill so amazing are the people. Uh, it's not our art scene. It's not our great schools, which are absolutely fabulous. It's not our great public transportation system. It's not even the restaurants. It's the people. It's the lady at the grocery store that knows when my kid gets a, a bad grade or, or knows uh, that we're getting a new dog. Those people make this a home, this place a home. I'm running because I want to make Chapel Hill a better place to, to live and work uh, and to raise a family. I want to increase Chapel Hill's, um, Chapel Hill's uh, reputation with businesses. I want to increase our reliance on business taxes and decrease, and I think I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> our next candidate, please. Oh, you don't know how to pronounce my name, do you? <laughs> Please pronounce it for me. As my younger son says, it's chai like in tea, cough like in cough, and ski like in downhill. So. <laughs> Give that man, man a couple of extra seconds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, well, uh, my background is, and my wife always tells me that I should give people my background, so as briefly as possible, immigrated here with my parents when I was seven years old. 
grew up in what at the time was referred to as a uh, blue collar neighborhood, ended up as an enlisted man in the US Navy during the Vietnam era, um, amazed myself by getting admitted to Harvard. I really didn't know about UNC at the time and uh, ended up going to New York and working in finance, went back to Harvard Business School, worked in finance again, and we moved here 12 years ago completely by accident. Uh, my wife and I happened to be here and said, gosh, this seems like just a wonderful place to live, and we haven't questioned our judgment for a day. So, And I ran for town council four years ago because I felt that the town was starting to maybe f sort of go in the wrong direction in some areas. Uh, my mom used to say that consistency was the hobgoblin of small minds, but by golly, I've been consistent. Oop. I guess I'll end there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Cho. Good evening, everyone. You speak English quite well as an immigrant. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to do what I can. <laughs> I try. My name is Augustus Cho, and I want to thank all of you for coming, and especially League of Women Voters, as well as NC Voter Education, for sponsoring tonight's uh, forum. Uh, I'm a Carolina graduate back in 82. Um, I majored in economics at the time. Years have passed and I'm back here again and in the last six years I've served on the transportation board, uh, last three years as chairman and also on the uh, community design as a commissioner. And also I've been asked to serve on the good neighbor plan for the IFC recently so I'm spending some time there. Um, other than that, I just, like everybody else, I, I love Chapel Hill and I want to make a difference as an individual and I look forward to your question. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bell, please. Good evening, my name is Donna Bell and I'm a candidate for town of Chapel Hill Town Council. And I appreciate everyone coming out tonight because I think one of the biggest issues we're gonna deal with in the coming year is engagement. We are participating in our 2020 visioning plan for the comprehensive planning process and our goal is to have 10,000 people lay hands on this project. Um, and I think it is a, a big goal, but I think it's a goal that represents the desire for Chapel Hill to be a town that's created by its people and imagined and dreamed of by its people. Um, the other big thing that's gonna face us is um, the budget cuts that we're gonna have to face. Um, we have already received word that our federal and state funding are being cut um, and there's uh, some noise that we will be looking at reduced revenues due to our taxes. So it'll be very important to have conversations with the citizens and with the staff to figure out how we're gonna prioritize what we're gonna support um, what sort of support are we gonna give to the services and what really makes Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill. Um, again, I'm Donna Bell. I live in Northside neighborhood. I'm a social worker and vote for me, please. Thank you, and Mr. Bell, Mr. Uh, Baker, excuse me, Mr. <laughs> Baker, thank you. We're not married. <laughs> <laughs> Her husband's name is Jason, for whatever it's worth. Uh, hi, my name's uh, Jason Baker. I'm running for the Chapel Hill Town Council. I want to begin by thanking the League of Women Voters for allowing us this opportunity tonight, uh, both for those of you in the audience as well as those of you watching this later on television. Um, the reason I'm running for the Chapel Hill Town Council is that I feel like this is a really volatile time. Um, where we need uh, leadership that's going to be both progressive and going to come in uh, with a level of experience to, to be able to handle the problems that the town will be facing in the next four years. Um, to, to that end, my experience uh, began with the town um, as a candidate for Chapel Hill Town Council when I was an undergraduate. Uh, I was not successful then, but had the opportunity to, to fall in love with um, all the wonderful opportunities for becoming a citizen advocate in the town. Uh, served a term or served for a while on the uh, Chapel Hill Transportation Board. I've been a member of the Planning Board uh, now for for over three years, and I've been on uh, numerous other boards and commissions. Um, I have also been a volunteer uh, advocate in in many other things that I hope to talk about later as I see my time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much for those opening statements. Now we get to the questions. Some are ones that were presented earlier to the mayoral candidates. Some may not be. And we are going to be giving the first respondent uh, one minute and then next respondents 30 seconds. And you, you gentlemen and lady will have to help me make sure I keep track of this. What I plan to do is direct the first question to Mr. Dale. We will then proceed in the same direction around the circle with 30 second respondents. And the question, Mr. Dale, for you to start with, do you have ideas about how the town can streamline the development process? And as a corollary, should it be streamlined? 
Yeah, I absolutely think it should be streamlined. I, I think that um, a big part of the process right now is that it's sort of ad hoc. Uh, everything comes up for SUP. So Matt actually hit on this in a different form when he said that what we really need to do is rezone appropriately. I agree 100% with that. And then I believe we need to put in policies and procedures and, and a plan for the next 10 years for growth that addresses that. And then let the town manage to that. Instead of having everything go through council, I sit on the Parks and Rec Commission and we see so many developments come through that we spend an hour talking about the fact that they're going to donate money in lieu of building a park. I'm not sure that that's a good use of the developer's time or uh, the town's time. Thank you. Mr. Chikowski. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I've watched the process now for four years, and we really have not approved more than one development in the four years, major development, since I've been on the council, other than one that the developer immediately walked away from. Um, and the neighbors are always opposed to any uh, proposals. Uh, others are opposed as well. And so the fundamental question is, well, what do we want uh, in those areas that are developable? And let's decide on that now. Let's have the courage to decide on that now and zone appropriately. Thank you. Mr. Cho. Yes, good question. Um, this question is actually this question actually impacts more than just the process itself. It actually impacts affordable housing because the process is so expensive that it uh, eliminates a lot of the affordable housing that we're trying to strive for. Um, LUMO report has recently come out, which hits a lot of the uh, issues on the head. In the past six years, I've seen this process a number of times, and I have some solutions, which is we need to streamline the process by combining boards and commissions where feasible, and also to uniformize the standard uh, process like Asheville has done and Durham has done. And also we need to tag projects like UPS so that every applicant knows where their process stands in the, um, the steps that it goes through. So therefore, oh, sorry. Ms. Bell. I think um, like all processes um, that um, our current planning process can be improved, but I also feel like as a council, we've had that as a goal over the last two years while I've been on council, that staff has worked towards that. And I look to staff to bring the technical um, information that we need to make decisions about where those sorts of changes happen um, and how they happen. Um, I'm a social worker, and that's where um, I bring my expertise and I, my sense of social justice, but I also feel like we have a dedication to economic development, and that's part of that um, process. Thank you. Mr. Baker. Uh, thank you. Yes, I definitely do feel that the development process in <coughs> Chapel Hill could um, use some streamlining, but I think it's very important that um, we're clear that um, I'm interested in looking at ways that we can change the process, but that doesn't mean that we need to change our standards. Um, I think that the process has brought us, uh, that we've had to this point, has brought us some very good projects. Um, you know, and I, just to touch on a couple of opportunities that we've, uh, the town has started ex um, experimenting with recently, um, the combined advisory board um, review process, I, in my opinion, has been uh, a, a good start that I'd like to see uh, improved upon, and there are many others. Thank you. Continuing on with you, Mr. Ward, the question is about, do you have ideas about how the town can streamline the development process, and should it be streamlined? Uh, yes, it should be. The council's already made that decision and has asked the staff to do uh, look closely at this process. Uh, a number of things are already in the works. Um, the one thing that has been mentioned is an increased transparency of the process so we know every at any point whose desk this is on so that it doesn't sit in somebody's outbox or inbox without it getting moved along. And the other thing I would say is that the 2020 comprehensive plan is an opportunity for us to have a conversation with the community so that we can perhaps uh, change the zoning where we don't have to have, a, therefore there won't be surprises when a higher density development occurs at a certain location. Thank you. Mr. Storo. We really live in a different town in Chapel Hill than we did 10 years ago. And we have a council who over the last two years has really made a commitment to thinking strategically about streamlining this process. Walgreens was able to open on Franklin Street in what used to be an empty storefront because our council made that commitment to moving forward and taking um, demands from developers in a new way that we hadn't done before. 
Our role now as a council is to look back and reflect on the work that has been done to streamline the development process, to think about what actually happens when we join committees and town boards together, and think strategically about what has worked in some of these early test cases and what hasn't. And thank you. And Mr. Schuler. <laughs> to the idea of streamlining the process, yes, I am in agreement that there is need for uh, streamlining the process. The uh, development process is a bit arcane and we need to take a look at that in order to increase its efficiency. One way to do that is to look at the private sector and see what has worked. Just as Donna had mentioned and what Jason had mentioned, I too have seen this streamlining process in healthcare as a registered nurse with over 20 years of experience dealing with all gamuts of the sector from physicians to other providers. Thank you, Mr. Shulop. And finally, Mr. DeHart. Yes, I agree that it should be streamlined as well. There are three issues that I want to make sure that we don't upset that I think are important to you as the voter. First is we make sure we, make sure we protect our neighborhoods. That's been the, mo the, the hottest topic that I've heard when I'm knocking on doors, make sure the neighbors have input on every project. Second, we need to maintain our environmental standards. We, have, we always look to Chapel Hill as being a leader in the environment, and we need to continue to do so. And third, we need to be objective versus being subjective. I talked to Aaron Nelson at the Chamber of Commerce, and he told me about their plan, and that would be an ash one that would work out very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, another question, and Mr. Chelsea, it's going to be your turn to have the 60 seconds and then 30 seconds for the remainders. This is a transportation question. Does the town need to improve the bus service, and if so, what should be done to improve it? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Where we found ourselves in this past budget year was actually reducing service to neighborhoods, to people who actually use the bus to go down to the university, who only own one car, which is something we always uh, espouse, um, and who also saved a lot of money by not having to rent a parking space downtown. Um, we're going to be facing more of that, and I think a real challenge for our transportation system, which serves 7 million people and a huge number of students, is how do we find a way to preserve it for residents of Chapel Hill who live in neighborhoods? Because what we did with our last budget decision was effectively say, well, all those things we say about people using the bus to come downtown, to go to work, et cetera, well, we don't really mean them for some neighborhoods because the utilization is low. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Cho. Uh, Chapel Hill Transit serves 30,000 riders a day, and we have the second largest transit system in the state behind Charlotte, which is quite impressive considering the size of the community that we live in. Unfortunately, the tra Chapel Hill Transit, like any other um, town agencies have been affected by the uh, budget difficulties, so therefore some cuts have to be made and have been made. But the process has been very open. The, um, the director and the assistant director have op held open hearings about wh what uh, lines to uh, either cut or, or slow the service down throughout the day. So it's been pretty, um, I would say pretty fair about it. But often people- Thank you. I believe the your 30 seconds is up. This is pretty tough to try to respond to these questions in 30 seconds. Ms. Bell. So I think transit is at the heart of sustainability in Chapel Hill, um, that until the current economic situations that were brought on by increased fuel costs and the maintenance costs for our fleet, that we've shown a strong commitment to not only um, engaging in a transit-friendly town, but expanding it whenever possible. Uh, I think that as we look forward onto our budget and look forward into our planning, transit will continue to be important. Our bus system will continue to be important, um, and we will support that. Thank you. Mr. Baker. Uh, I think that the biggest hurdle when we talk about transit funding is it, it, it takes courage to stand up and say that I'm going to be committed to funding transit no matter what, but I think that that's what we need to do as a town council. We continue to make a push for greater density along our transit corridors and in our downtown areas um, with the underlying idea being that um, these people are going to be able to, to take the bus to reduce their car uh, automobile ownership and usage. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to provide uh, regular, consistent service. And I plan to stand up for that uh, in the town's budget process. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ward. 
Yes, I, I serve as the chair of the partnership, uh, Transit Partnerships Committee, uh, which is a partnership with the town of Chapel Hill, the town of Carborough, and UNC Chapel Hill. UNC Chapel Hill is by far the largest financial supporter. We all pay a according to our, our use of the system. Uh, we uh, instituted a, um, had a consultant come in and take a look at our system. Because this system is 20 plus years old and it grew organically, uh, if we designed it today, we, we wouldn't have the same system. So we have been able to get this, take a fresh look at our system and get some efficiencies out of our current service and therefore we've been able to uh, extend service as a result of that greater efficiency. Thank you, Mr. Storo. We have a world-class transportation system in Chapel Hill because of our strong partnership between the university, the town of Carborough, and Chapel Hill. And if we want to continue that, we need to talk realistically about putting the transit referendum on the ballot in 2012. Many of you know that Durham County will be voting on that referendum this November, including Chapel Hill residents who live in Durham County, and I hope that the county commissioners have the same um, sight, foresight to put that referendum on the ballot in Chapel Hill. Charlotte's done it and has a building a world-class transportation system, and I want to see Chapel Hill do the same. Mr. Schuler, Transportation is key to the town, <laughs> and it affects the livelihoods of not only the residents that are here, citizens, but also with uh, faring workers from the university. There is room for improvement on that, especially for those that do not have a bus route in proximity and uh, to the residents. These would be issues that I would look at in the coming years. Thank you, Mr. DeHart. I currently serve on the town's transportation board and I've been able to learn a lot about our bus system and, and as everyone has already said, we have one of the, the best systems in North Carolina. We carry as many people as about any other town in the, in the state and we do it efficiently and I think We've done a really good job with that, but there's always room for improvement. I think one of the things we need to look at or maybe come up with better bus shelters to help us where we can have people when they're waiting for the bus and may not get rained on or may not get too hot in the sun as it gets here in the summertime. And Mr. Dale, last to you on bus service. Thank you. I agree that we have a great bus system. <clears throat> I would say if we were going to improve it, one thing I'd like to see is improving service to the people that need it the most. So. Quick example, the elderly that need the bus to go to the doctor or go to the grocery store, finding ways to provide those routes uh, and make them more accessible. But I also think that we have to look at alternative transportation when we talk about transportation and investing realistically in bicycle routes, bicycle pathways and greenways to, to increase the use of bicycles in Chapel Hill. Thank you. I'd like to let the audience know that if you have a burning question you want to have asked, please raise your hand. And there are people in the audience with cards who would write down, I hope, a very brief question to hand that might be asked to the candidates. Now, I want to try, as we did in the earlier section with the mayoral candidates, several yes and no questions. And so with a show of hands, and I'll ask you when you raise your hands for a yes vote or a no vote, if you'll hold your hands up so that uh, that everyone can see and that can be recorded. The first question is another transportation and a safety question. Do you support a ban on talking on cell phones while driving in Chapel Hill? If your answer is yes, please raise your hand. Thank you. If your answer is no, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. The next question is a tax question. Do you support the proposed Orange County one quarter cent sales tax? And do you believe it will benefit Chapel Hill? So the question is, do you support it, basically? And that's, if the answer is yes, raise your hand. Okay, I see 100% there on that. Okay, public financing question. Uh, the town of Chapel Hill has tried this for two election cycles. Would you want to see it renewed in 2013? If your answer is yes, please raise your hand. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much. If your answer is no, please raise your hand. Okay, thank you very much. That is very informative to have those, those <coughs> questions. Let me move to a housing question slightly different from the one we heard in the earlier conversation with mayoral candidates. And this one, I believe we're now starting with you, Mr. Cho for a 60 second response and remainders have 30 seconds. Do you have ideas about how to manage student housing in the community? I think we need to uh, 
broaden our uh, housing options into duplexes. I think we need to give uh, Robert Downing of Home Trust flexibility by um, allowing developers to offer payment in lieu. Um, I think we need to give some options to Northside by allowing a home trust to work on that community by allowing the home trust funds to buy some homes there or to re make the uh, replacement or repairs there or to maintain homes there. I think we need to essentially be flexible when it comes to housing so that we're not locked into just condos or single home houses, housing. And also, I, I think that we need to seriously consider uh, discussing mixed use, considering the buffer that we have agreed to maintain. Thank you very much. Ms. Bell. Could you repeat the question, please? The question is, do you have ideas about how to manage student housing in the community? Yes, I think that the university is one of our largest partners, and we have to work in collaboration with them to know what sort of um, populations they're planning, not only currently, but in the future. Um, students are citizens uh, while they're here in Chapel Hill, and so they need places to live. Um, but as a town, we have to be able to plan for our long-term future um, and creating, creating spaces both for those who come here temporarily but, and those who stay here for decades. Thank you. And Mr. Baker. You know, obviously, um, as a former student renter, I, I recognize the impact that students can have on uh, neighborhoods. And I think it's important that we do uh, everything within our ability to work closely with the university to ensure that they're able to provide the largest amount of housing uh, possible. Um, in the meantime, I think that we need to do what we can to mitigate the effects of um, students uh, housing themselves in residential neighborhoods. I was a supporter of the Northside uh, Moratorium because I think that we need to take the time uh, to step back and look at how the NCD uh, is working in that community and how we can make improvements to it um, to better uh, help the needs of the long-term residents in that area. Thank you. Mr. Ward. We need to continue to be uh, have a partner with the Dean of Students and uh, student government. Uh, this is a, a real challenge. We need to educate a, a new crop of students every year. Uh, we need to have greater enforcement. We've got some rules on the books that are not being enforced adequately. And I think the, uh, uh, we need to put the onus on the managers of the property rather than the people who live in it. That way uh, we'll get the attention of the students, I think, more quickly uh, than we are able to now. Thank you. Mr. Storoy. I want to talk realistically about what our partnership with the university looks like because the reality is that UNC is behind our peer institutions and in what UNC does for off-campus residential education. If you were to compare us to Michigan State, for example, UNC has one staff person who part-time his job is dedicated to working with off-campus students. I think one of my strengths as a candidate are my ties to student leaders and university administrators, and one of the things I want to do is really ramp up our efforts about educating students to ensure rent rates are lower, which also helps to um, impact long-term residents in Chapel Hill and further their education. Thank you. Mr. Shula. Yes, I do have uh, some ideas with student housing and with affordable housing, but germane to the question of student housing, well, this is not a question that we do have a very large number of students to live off campus. I'm also a proponent of market rate. Let the uh, market dictate uh, the housing needs that go on in part based on demand. But we would need to have a closer effort with the university and with uh, management companies of student housing. Thank you, Mr. DeHart. Yes, I have lots of ideas about housing. That's what I do for a living. I've been helping people achieve the American dream for almost 20 years. But the first thing is we have to make sure that we protect the neighborhoods. I had an opportunity last week to go to Mama Dips and have lunch with Ms. Velma Perry, who's lived in the Northside neighborhood for, I think, 88 of her 90 years. And she's a sweet lady, and she taught me a lot about Northside. I just I didn't know, so I went out and found somebody who did know about it. And we need to make sure we listen to people like Ms. Perry and make sure that her neighborhood's protected. Thank you, Mr. Dale. <clears throat> It's a big question for 30 seconds, but, um, <clears throat> you know, and I'm not sure which way to address it. If we talk about housing prices and rental prices, the market's going to, we live in a free market society, so the market's, people are going to pay what they can afford or, or they're not going to rent there. Um, if we talk about uh, other problems, I'm not sure what those problems would be, whether it's increased, uh, I don't know, frat parties in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm really not sure. 
the house we were in when we came to Chapel Hill had four guys living in it and it had been rented to students for the last uh, 10 years. Uh, and it Mr. Chikowski, if you'll close on this question. Sure, uh, two parts to my answer, see if I can get to both of them. But the first is, there should be nowhere in Chapel Hill where the front yards are covered with cars and where there are beer cans and wine bottles, et cetera. It's absolutely unacceptable. We have to do something about it. Second issue, though, is as the university undergraduate population has grown, virtually no new housing has been built in Chapel Hill. Uh, it's a huge problem, and as has been explained to the council, it puts enormous economic pressure on the neighborhoods. I hope that the university will work with us to build more student housing in Carolina North. Thank you. And I, want, I want to apologize because I didn't hear the word student, so I apologize for not hearing that word student when I answered. Thank you. Uh, we have an excellent question from the audience that I want to pose. And uh, we will be starting, let's see, where are we starting here? We are starting with you, Ms. Bell. And I'm going to ask the indulgence of the candidates. I'm going to ask this question, give you uh, the 60 seconds, then 30, and then I'd like to reduce the closing time to 30 seconds. I do apologize. So many important issues to, to cover. So starting with you, Ms. Bell, how do you propose to increase Chapel Hill's commercial tax base? Considering the number of retail vacancies currently, building additional commercial space may not be the answer. Any other ideas? So one of the things that we've uh, been focusing on in the past years has been small retail. Um, and we are currently looking at building uh, bigger retail. I think that will not only bring in increased um, tax revenue, but it will also bring in jobs. I also think that we are building uh, a system in which we want to live in and those smaller retail spaces, as we get more and more people um, on the streets, that those retail spaces will also grow. Um, one of the things that has come up in our economic development um, reports is the idea that we will absorb retail space over a longer period of time, that you don't build it and then it's suddenly filled, but it's actually filled over a three or five or eight year um, period. And I think that's what we're currently doing right now. Thank you, Mr. Baker. You know, uh, for the past several years after I graduated uh, from the university, I worked in marketing for a local uh, independent retailer, and I saw firsthand some of the difficulties uh, that there are for uh, retailers working in our area, and I think that there's a lot that local government can do to help them, whether it's uh, making the permitting process uh, a little bit easier, if, if not reducing the standards, um, you know, working to uh, find ways to uh, free up capital for local businesses, working to promote them uh, through marketing efforts and uh, other opportunities to really encourage our entire community to focus their shopping on local businesses. Thanks. Mr. Ward. Yes, first of all, we need to nurture our existing businesses. Uh, beyond that, we need to have stronger, smarter partnerships with UNC, UNC hospitals, the chamber, um, our downtown businesses in particular, but really all of our businesses. Um, and take a, a strategic look at how we are spending our economic development dollars right now. Some for the Visitors Bureau, Downtown Partnership, Economic Development Officer, are, are all those coordinated and doing, uh, creating some synergy rather than isolated entities that really don't know what each other's are doing. Um, and also I think uh, I'd like to see us um, do some other things and I'll tell you about that another day. <laughs> and Mr. Storo. When we talk about empty retail, I instantly jump to downtown Franklin Street. I used to be able to buy a dozen bagels on downtown Franklin Street, but once Brugger's closed, that storefront has sat in empty for years. And I think it's a real shame that when we walk downtown, what should be one of the most thriving downtowns in, in the state of North Carolina, there are empty storefronts. So I think council needs to work strategically to find ways to bring businesses to downtown, to work with current existing folks who have access to parking, to work on liability concerns, to open that parking and really bring folks and businesses into our downtown setting. Thank you, Mr. Schuler. To address the issue of the commercial tax base and with uh, various merchants and retailers, while there is room for uh, growth to be done smartly, we should also look at existing opportunities and for the and to make opportunities for retail, small business and entrepreneurial uh, activities here in Chapel Hill. We should think of the same way, much as we're talking about affordable housing, but with affordable office space. And that's what I would work towards. Thank you, Mr. DeHart. 
I'd like to see us improve our attitude and our hospitality. Um, most of the folks that I've talked to say that we don't, it doesn't seem like we, we welcome business to come to town. And we need to, if we want someone to come, we need to make them feel welcome when they get here. I've talked to several developers with the process, the word, always, the word always comes up as arduous. Arduous is not a common word and that's what we'd use to describe our process. And it doesn't necessarily need to lower our economic, our environmental standards, but we do need to make it where it's friendly and inviting for people that want to come here. And currently, I don't think we've, we are that way. And thank you. And Mr. Dale. Yeah, I think um, a good start would be doing a better job of marketing the businesses we have here and giving people a reason to get into them and shop. The second part of that is bringing in business people want to shop at. We have some great retail centers like U-Mall, uh, Eastgate, and actually Eastgate's great after they've redone it, uh, and Rams Plaza that people don't use a whole lot. If you are at Rams Plaza, that parking lot's empty a lot. Uh, we could do a lot instead of building a, a new retail center to redo that retail center and bring in businesses that people are going to shop at. Okay, Mr. Chikowski. Thanks. I mean, clearly we need to do everything we can to nurture the smaller retailers that are here. But I've been saying this for four years, um, and the statistics are, on, I mean, just compelling. We do not have a sustainable tax base in terms of the percentage of commercial, particularly sales tax revenue, to property tax. We are going to have to make a decision as to whether we substantially increase that tax base or not. Uh, it is going to be challenging. People will oppose that. Um, but we're going to have to make that choice, and that means bringing significant retailing to Chapel Hill. And finally, Mr. Cho. I, I agree, largely agree with Matt, and I would dovetail into his answers by adding uh, a few thoughts. Um, I think we need to overcome this anti-business uh, image that Chapel Hill has, and I have to give council a lot of credit um, because they are, have actually worked at it to become more pro-business, so I appreciate that as a resident. And, and I guess part of the problem, process maybe that we make their application uh, easier so they can get through uh, the business aspect quicker so that they can open up a business and sustain it and just essentially be supportive of commerce so that we can balance out our environmental needs with our commerce, uh, tax base. Thank you very much. I'm going to present up several more yes and no questions. You all are very good at raising your hands and <laughs> informing us about your views. Uh, related to the topic we just covered, do you want a big box store in Chapel Hill? If your answer is yes, please raise your hand. I believe we've got 100% there. So, Next question. Should the town sell the former downtown library, that is 523 East Franklin Street? Yes or no? Uh, yes, I will ask. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the three, I see three hands raised for that. Answer is no. Raise your hand. Thank you very much. Uh, sh uh, this is another yes and no question. Should the town sell the old town hall fire station on Rosemary Street? Yes? No. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that. I see there's unanimity in uh, re retaining that uh, facility among you. Another yes and no question. Do you support the school's adequate public facilities ordinance? Yes. No. I think I see unanimity among those who raised their hands. Thank you. Okay, back to a discuss discussion question. And Mr. Baker, I believe you're leading out this time. What are the most important town values to incorporate into the new comprehensive plan? You have 60 seconds, other respondents will have 30 seconds. Well, one of the great things about the process that we've set up for tackling the new comprehensive plan process is that my input into the answer to that question matters so very little compared to the input of the many, many citizens who are inviting uh, to participate in the process. I was so pleased. Um, I was a member of the initiating committee that helped 
uh, design the process for moving forward. And I could not have been more thrilled to see the turnout that we had last Tuesday night at the uh, comprehensive plan kickoff meeting. And I invite all of you in the audience or those listening at home to come to our next meeting uh, this coming uh, Thursday so that you can participate as well or check the town's website for future meetings after that. That said, um, my two top priorities personally are going to be balancing the needs of economic development and environmental sustainability uh, of the candidates up here tonight. I'm the only one who has leadership experience with uh, both local economic development organizations as well as uh, local uh, environmental organizations and I hope to bring that experience both to the council as well as the comprehensive planning process. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Ward. In one, one single most important is the public process. Uh, it, the process is as important as the outcome, I believe, in this case. And it has to be a, uh, that's why we're working so hard to have 10,000 people participate or whatever that number is, uh, uh, a valuable uh, commodity is other people's opinions that we can incorporate into the final product. And, and I believe that that final product will be a balance of economic um, vitality, how to grow that, nurture that, while maintaining the environmental uh, standards that we have and making sure that this is a community that everyone, regardless of economic class, can thrive and feels a part of. Thank you. Mr. Storo. I was really thrilled with how the comprehensive, um, the first meeting of the 2020 visioning meeting went, and it was really impressive to walk from table to table. And when you talk about visions and themes, I was really struck when I talked to some residents at one table who had written on their um, flow chart, we want to be a small town that lives big. And that phrase really stuck with me when I left the building that night. In no other community in North Carolina do I think I could have gotten tickets to see the Bolshevoy Ballet in a town with around 50,000 residents. So that is a theme that has stuck with me, that I want to keep our small town feel by supporting our big vision we have. Thank you. Mr. Schuler. With the comprehensive plan, one uh, underscoring theme that came away is livability and the uniqueness to Chapel Hill that uh, citizens just don't find elsewhere. So of the town values to look at, uh, and I think most of us have touched upon the idea, we need to have uh, opportunity for uh, citizens to, um, to have the cultural resources, uh, the working ability, and uh, affordability with housing. And this will be looked at. Thank you. And Mr. DeHart, to the question, what are the most important town values to incorporate into the new comprehensive plan? When I've been listening to folks talk when I've been out walking the streets and knocking on voters' doors, the thing that keeps coming back is how we value diversity in Chapel <coughs> Hill and we, we value inclusion. And I think that's been a great part. I was also at the meeting. There were over 400 people in attendance and it was great seeing business people sitting beside environmental people and we're all working together to make it a better place. The things that we can't compromise on are going to be in our environmental standards and we need to make sure it's more efficient because it's going to make it more business friendly and make it a better place for us all. Thank you. And Mr. Dale. Thank you. Uh, I think we have, to, we have to take this opportunity to define who we are as a city. Are we a big small town, which is the way I think of Chapel Hill, or are we the next uh, Durham where we're going to have explosive growth? Uh, we also have to focus on economic growth, which I think everybody here agrees with. But I think control development has to be key. We're putting in a lot of new uh, units downtown between 140 and the universe, proposed University Square. And we keep talking about building up, but we still have a two-lane road that goes in and out of Chapel Hill in almost each direction. How do people get to work from downtown, I'll stop, if they have to cut through the university? Thank you. Mr. Dachowski. Thanks. I should get a little extra time because it takes you twice as long to say my name as it is. <laughs> um, uh, but I better rush now. Um, one of the things of which I am most proud is that in this very room, about three years ago at a meeting of Neighborhoods for Responsible Growth, of whom there are a couple of members here, I was the only council member who said we had to redo our comprehensive plan, the only one. We then launched out with the Visioning Task Force which I think did some valuable things, but it was not inclusive. I am so thrilled to see the process as it's undertaking, and we will get the right answers. Thank you. It was probably the largest uh, group of people that I've seen in Chapel Hill since I've been back, and it was really exciting <laughs> to see that, and also hearing so many different ideas about how individuals um, define and see Chapel Hill. And 
more importantly, how we can bring it all together. Personally, I like to see the theory of diversity meet the reality of our needs in terms of economic, in terms of cultural, in terms of uh, ra racial diversity, that we can all kind of bring it all together and work together to make our community the best that we can be. Thank you. Ms. Bell. I think the most important value that we need to include in this process is collaboration um, with as many people as we want to have involved in this process. There are going to be a lot of different needs, priorities, um, and desires. And the one thing that will unite us all is our desire to have Chapel Hill be the best place that it can be. Um, and we need to hold on to that idea as we have some difficult decisions and have some difficult conversations, but come to some um, defining moments about where we're going to be for the next 10 years. Um, so I'll give one more plug for the meeting at East Chapel Hill High on Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Thank you. <clears throat> we're on to you, Mr. Ward, for a 60-second response to a tax question with a uh, first broad question and then specifics you may want to add. Do you think town taxes are too high? And if so, do you have suggestions as to where to cut them? Well, let me just say that uh, we have been looking at the town tax issue for the last three years in, in particular, but really every year that I've been in service on the town council, and I believe has been very um, responsible to the citizens of Chapel Hill in terms of um, making this, doing what we can to make this community a um, an opportunity for everybody regardless of economic status by keeping taxes low. Uh, a, a very small thing, but it's, uh, I think it may set the tone. I would be one. Uh, I hope my colleagues would would uh, follow suit in terms of doing what, uh, taking less, uh, reducing the stipend that count council members get for service. Uh, it doesn't generate much money, but it might generate enough money to to do uh, something very worthwhile for one of the many nonprofits that we're going to have to say no to otherwise. Um, the other thing about taxes that I would say is that we are in a conversation with uh, with Orange County government. They have the ability to allocate taxes uh, in a couple different ways, and if they change what they're doing now to something else, it might cost the town of Chapel Hill about $2 million. Thank you. Mr. Storo, 30 seconds. I think Council Member Ward and the rest of Council really deserve a lot of props for the fact that in the last three years we have not raised property taxes in Chapel Hill. And that was a commitment that the Council's made to, to in times of austerity to working with our community and keeping taxes not increasing these last three years. It's also meant that there's been a lot of folks who've left positions in town government and those positions haven't been filled. And our policemen and our firemen and our civic servants are doing a lot less with not as much as they had three years ago. So I think we have to be really thoughtful about how we move forward um, with the budget in the future. Thank you. Mr. Schuler. Not only have we not had a tax increase since 2008, but in the reevaluation of properties, they uh, may have, um, what I'm trying to say is, there may be less tax to pay based on the reevaluation of properties. But I think how we have to move forward, because what we've heard so far is a harbinger of things to come when you look at the nationwide economic situation. So we're going to have to look at a case-by-case -case basis of the services and determine by listening uh, with comment from citizens where we need to prioritize services. Thank you. Mr. DeHart. I just got my tax bill, and yes, I think I think taxes are too high. Um, I talked to Miss Perry last week. Um, she said her taxes were too high, so I think most people agree that the taxes are too high. I'm not sure what what the best way to cut them is, but there are other ways to be creative. On the ballot, this the same time we're being elected is a quarter cent sales tax, and that will allow us to hopefully fund some economic development that will encourage retail growth in Orange County, which should bring revenues to the county, which should help all of us. And we necessarily cut taxes, but we don't have to increase them anymore. Thank you. Mr. Dale. It's true that town taxes are higher than a lot of other places, but the real question is what are we going to cut if we cut taxes? Are we going to cut someone's job in the town? Are we going to stop uh, plowing the roads when there's snow? There are a lot of, lot of options to it that allow us to cut taxes. <clears throat> Uh, I agree the quarters and sales tax uh, initiative goes a long way to spur economic development and several years from now that will probably help with the budget. We do have to find ways to be more creative with our current budget and plan for the future with our budget and not rely on the bubble that we've had. 
Thank you. Mr. Joukowsky. If you ask any real estate agent, they'll tell you that taxes, the high taxes in Chapel Hill, granted part of which are Orange County, are a real problem today. Uh, I didn't hear that four years ago. Um, so it's a real issue. Uh, the choices we're going to have to make in the next year or two are, are just going to be incredibly difficult. I'll give you an example of where trade-offs get made. Uh, we, seven out of nine members of the council passed uh, basically a resolution to go ahead with the new library expansion. Um, that's going to add 1.3 cents to the tax rate. Question is, should we have done that? Are we prepared to add 1.3 cents? Those kinds of challenges we're going to face in, in, in multiples next year. Thank you. Mr. Cho. I don't think it's just Chapel Hill that's experiencing economic challenges. It's throughout the country. All the uh, municipalities are experiencing that. So if we can maintain our tax as is or lower it, that would be wonderful in order for us to maintain services that are vital to our community. Uh, and of course, as a councilman, I will strive to keep taxes at least where we are, if not lower. And I will support Jim's uh, reducing stipend, uh, council stipend idea. I have no problems with that. But I think the bigger issue is that we need to increase the tax base by uh, accepting the development proposals instead of re uh, rejecting them so we can increase jobs and taxes and et cetera so we can have some income. Thank you. And Ms. Bell? So I, when this question comes up, what I ask myself is whether citizens are receiving an adequate value for the taxes that they pay. And with the surveys that we have done for services in Chapel Hill, we consistently get high praise for the, um, the services that we provide. Um, the issue becomes, do taxes keep people, long-term residents, from being able to keep their homes? That's a problem. Um, do taxes make it um, hard for people who work in our area to live in our area? That's an issue. But um, the issue that is raised by this question is, are people receiving value for the taxes that they pay? And I believe they are. Thank you. And Mr. Baker. You know, I think that all the candidates <clears throat> up here, including myself, uh, support uh, increasing our commercial development as a, a solution uh, for a long-term way to uh, bring our, our budget more in balance. But I think in the short term, we're going to have some really difficult times in the next few years as the money that trickles down from the state and the county diminishes. Um, and I think it's important that we remain committed to providing the quality uh, of services that our citizens ask us for and, and that we're committed to. Uh, and I think I, it's also important to remind everyone that uh, yet, while uh, taxes are high, they're only a, a small part of the affordability for many people. and. Uh, public housing, transit service, and many other things are uh, just as great of an impact on affordability. Thank you. Thank you. We have covered a lot of ground and a lot of issues, and those yes and no questions helped us move right along on some of the topics. I'm going to exercise the power of the moderator. We're going to go back to one-minute closing statements, and we will now begin, and we're going to go in reverse order. So, Mr. Baker. We're going to begin with your one-minute statement, and Mr. Ward, you'll have the last word. Well, very good. Uh, first of all, thanks again to the League of Women Voters for hosting this event tonight. Um, uh, I realize since our format for answers was fairly short that I didn't get the opportunity <coughs> to address all the questions that you may have. So uh, for anyone in the audience who'd like to ask me a question afterwards, I'd be happy to stick around. Otherwise, for those of you at home, please visit my website, www.jasonbaker.us, uh, and you can find out a little bit more about uh, my campaign and about why I'm running. Um, in, in summary, the reason I'm running is that I feel that Chapel Hill is in need of a progressive leader, uh, someone who's going to stand up and be an advocate for neighborhood protection, for environmental sustainability, uh, but also for increasing our vibrant local uh, economy in a way that uh, will allow it to be truly sustainable in its own sense. I'm an advocate for making affordable housing a priority, for um, increased participation by the public in the planning process, and for better local and regional transit service. The issues that uh, affect Chapel Hill are many, and I think that it's important as we look forward to our future that we elect leaders uh, with the experience to be able to tackle these issues, and I hope that I'm able to present myself as that candidate. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Bell. I once again want to thank everyone who's coming out to engage in this process, both here in person, those who will be watching um, on their televisions. I think it's important to remember that town council is not made up of one mind. Um, it's made up of nine individuals who have to come to a table and collaborate on decisions that impact all the Chapel Hill citizens. And as a voter, it's important that you choose someone who not only has perspective and experience to bring to the table, but also has the ability to collaborate with their fellow council members, staff, and citizens. The goal of council members is to bring their knowledge to the table, ask questions that haven't been asked, 
craft answers to hard um, questions and stay committed to their principles. They have to be able to do all of those things. I am capable of doing all of those things and I've proven it over the last two years. Um, I don't tend to take strong stands on things as far as I'm an environmentalist or I'm a neighborhood preservationist because I have to bring all of that information to bear. When you ask me a question about whether I would close the museum or, or sell the property downtown, until I know all the factors that come into bear, I can't make those decisions. You need someone on council who's able to stay balanced when they're thinking about things. Thank you. Mr. Cho. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, you could all be somewhere else, but the fact that you're here speaks, uh, speaks well of you. I think Chapel Hill comes as close to uh, the fictional town of Lake Wobegon, where all the women are strong and all the men are good looking and all the uh, kids are smart. Um, the issues that we face are actually good signs because it means that people want to come to our community and live here among us. I think it's projected that by 2020, uh, our population will grow, grow from 53,000 to about 80,000. That's a good sign. And, but we have challenges meeting uh, the housing needs and et cetera. But I think all of us, if we get together and work together, we can overcome those things. So for me, the best is yet to come for Chapel Hill. Anything you need to know about um, Augustus Cho, come visit my website, AugustusCho.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chikowski. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that when I decided to run for council four years ago, it was because I was concerned about some of the directions that I thought the town was heading in. And in fact, obviously, we're in much more daunting economic times. And yet, in an odd way, I actually feel more hopeful because I think there's a much broader discussion now in Chapel Hill that people feel a little freer to talk about a range of alternatives. Uh, and I think as we move through Chapel Hill 2020 and the next year or two, uh, although there'll be strong feelings and passion uh, on both sides of virtually every issue, uh, that we will emerge, in fact, as a stronger and better town for it. But we do need people on the council, as Donna Bell said, who are going to weigh both sides, uh, do their best to, to, to make a determination as to, on balance, which is a superior alternative, and have the courage and I emphasize courage to make the choice. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dale. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm getting over a little cold. You know, I have, over the last 20 years, uh, proven myself as a business leader, as a community leader, uh, in everything from Cub Scouts to uh, soccer referee, soccer coaching, um, Parks and Rec Commission, di different organizations. I'm running because I believe we need leaders that can take us through the next 10 to 20 years and leaders that can get things done. Leaders that don't want to spend time talking about whether a Walgreens should go on Franklin Street, but just let the Walgreens go in there. It seems like a, some, it's a waste of our time as leaders. Leaders that understand that leaders set the road and make sure you're still on path. They don't go down and uh, cut the road themselves. Mr. DeHart. I'm John DeHart and I'm running for town council and I'd like to thank the league for hosting us tonight. It's been a great evening and we've learned a lot. Each person that's going to be voting on November the 8th has four votes. I just want one of your four votes. Um, statistically, it's proven <laughs> that you, the person that's number one vote getter doesn't necessarily win, but the person that's the fourth place of everybody, they get to win. So I just want to be your fourth place vote getter. So to learn more about me, um, I am hosting a public event on October 15th at the Larkspur Clubhouse, and everyone is invited. It's $10, and it's going to be a barbecue, and love to have everybody in Chapel Hill that's able to come out, and it is open to everyone in the public. To learn more about me and my website, about me at my website, go to dehartforcouncil.com. That's D-E-H-A-R-T-F-O-R-C-O-U-N-C-I-L, dehartforcouncil.com. Love to see everybody on the 15th, and come see me. Thank you. Mr. Schuler. Thank you, Roz. And again, with the, for the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight's forum mm -hmm. and for the uh, video services. In the decision to run for council uh, was based upon a good number of years being here in Chapel Hill, being a homeowner, and expanding issues from neighborhood association to town matters. And I think we have a lot on the agenda that we have all touched upon this evening. We have more work to do, 
and we need people on council that are dynamic, engaging, and willing to get answers to questions to serve the constituents of the town. I'm also here to provide an option to the voters, as well as the eight other candidates, to give you a choice as to how you would like to see the town uh, take form with council. Again, I'm Carl Schuler at carlschuler.info has additional information about me and happy to speak with anyone and engage uh, in any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Storo. Thanks everyone. My name is Lee Storo and I'm running for town council. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight and our two co-hosts organizations. This is really how we find out the candidates we support and how democracy really comes into action. I want to be a candidate and have been a candidate who's done the work to really reach out to citizens in our community where folks feel comfortable and in their homes. I've talked to residents in coffee shops in Chapel Hill, I've talked to them in their community centers, and I've talked to them on their front porch. And when you really do the work to reach out to citizens, you can understand and work to represent them. It's our job as council members to represent all citizens, not just the people who vote for me or not just the people who donated to my campaign, but every single person in Chapel Hill. And I've hosted many public events in Chapel Hill and will continue to do so. Unlike John, you don't have to pay $10 to come to mine, and I will continue to hold that standard until the end of the campaign. I'm Lee Storo, and I hope you'll vote for me this fall. No one will work harder for Chapel Hill. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Thank you very much to uh, the League of Women Voters for hosting us tonight. Um, I'm a proven, experienced leader. I've got 12 years on the town council. I think that leadership will serve us well. I believe I have demonstrated a balanced perspective. Um, I, most importantly, in Chapel Hill, I think I embrace the public process. The best ideas come from you, and it's uh, the uh, skill of the council members to uh, identify what those, what that, what that public perception is, and incorporate it into into our decision making process. I have been and will continue to be a strong advocate for Chapel Hill's brightest future. Uh, I am a professional uh, environmentalist uh, working at the North Carolina Botanical Garden for 35 plus years. Uh, I am a, uh, a member of the strategic activities of the current town council uh, as far as economic development, nurturing existing and bringing additional economic development opportunities to our town. And uh, really most importantly to me is protecting and nurturing the diverse populace uh, of those who live here now and hope to live here one day. Thank you very much. Candidates, I want to thank you all very much for participating in this forum and for being willing to give your time and effort to serve on the council. And now I'd like to say a closing word to the voting public. Voting day is November the 8th. Early voting begins on October 20th and ends November 5th at four locations in the county. The Board of Elections in Hillsborough, the Carborough Town Hall, University Square, Suite 133G, it's in the back of the buildings, and the Seymour Senior Center. To check the hours, each site will be open. You can pick up a sheet uh, in the back of this room tonight, or you can go to the Orange County Board of Elections website. For further information on candidates and to see a rebroadcast of this forum, go to the Center for Voter Education Voter Guide at ncvoterguide.org. The League of Women Voters website has a link to the forum and candidates information at NC, no, let me start that again, odc.nc.lwvnet.org. The forum will also be rebroadcast on channel 18. So on behalf of the League of Women Voters, I encourage all voters to exercise their right to vote in this important election. And again, to say thanks to all the candidates. Good evening. Thank you.
This has been the 2011 Chapel Hill Mayoral and Town Council Candidate Forum, presented by the League of Women Voters of Orange, Durham, Chatham, and the North Carolina Center for Voter Education. Election day for Chapel Hill is November 8th. Early voting and same-day registration run October 20th through November 5th. For more information on this year's Chapel Hill candidates, please visit ncvoterguide.org.